الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So respected brothers, sisters, and youngsters, the chapter continues related to raja, that is hope and desire, anticipation for the mercy and the bounties of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The narration that is before us today is on the reports from. Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu an. He says that at one occasion the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings upon him, said, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ دَفَعَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ يَهُودِيًّا أَوْ نَصْرَانِيًّا فَيَقُولُ هَذَا فَكَاكُكَ مِنَ النَّارِ The Prophet sallallahu declared at this one occasion that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, will deliver in place of every believer, a disbeliever. فَيَقُولْ And the announcement will be made, هَذَا فَكَاكُكَ مِنَ النَّارِ This is your ransom from the position or the place for the, from the fire of hell. This is the ransom in place in the fire of hell. Now, as we see in this narration, this is under the narration of Raja, which means mercy and bounty. And uh, this narration, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is declaring, which the commentators have given several different opinions as to what it exactly means. And from what was said, basically the understanding is that when a believer will enter paradise, then it will be told to the believer that there is a ransom in your place when it comes to the hellfire. So. The scholars of hadith, they give several interpretations to this, but over here we have one interpretation that is discussed and agreed by numerous scholars. And it says, لِكُلِّ أَحَدِ منزل فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنزِلٌ فِي النار. The commentators say that for every human being, there is a stipulated place both in the hellfire and also in paradise. So as soon as a human being comes on the face of this earth, in fact, before a human being is born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared and decreed a position for this individual both in paradise and also in the hellfire. And we know it is the uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us willpower. He has given us the power of choice. And through that willpower, we either make or we undertake actions that lead us closer to paradise or lead us closer to the hellfire. So when the believer on the day of judgment is told to enter paradise, then this announcement will be made, هَذَا فِكَاكُكَ مِنَ النَّارِ That this is the ransom of your place in hellfire. Meaning that, had you done equally what you've done in terms of good, if you've done evil and sin, then your place and position would have been equal in level, but where? In the hellfire. But you chose out of your willpower and the choice, the power to choose what is good, and you led yourself towards the mercy and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah protected you from ending up in the place where you would be in the hellfire. And some ulama and muhaddithun scholars of hadith also say that the disbeliever will also be told this when they are made to enter the hellfire that had you made the right choice, had you undertaken the appropriate uh, uh, options to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then your position would have been in paradise of equal status but you chose the wrong path and you ended up in this position of the hellfire so again this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah protects one from the hellfire by first of all accepting the faith getting into the fold of Islam declaring the shahada. We had a sister just before the prayer who declared her shahada. So this is the first instruction that we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and there is none worthy of worship except this one being. And we understand that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger and whatever he has brought, kullu ma jaa'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything that the Prophet peace and blessings upon him brought in terms of a way of life, in terms of guidance, it will definitely guide one towards the truth. The more we practice, the more we are enveloped with that mercy and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next narration is on the strength of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah. 
He says that I once heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Yudna al-mu'minu yawm al-qiyamati min Rabbi." That on the day of judgment, a believer will be brought very close to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Hatta yadu kanafahu alayh. And as a metaphor, the Prophet sallallahu said, a person will be so close to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala as if the shade of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala will be upon a person. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond space, beyond time, beyond a physical form that would have shadows and, and etc. But as a metaphor, the Prophet is saying that a person will be brought so close to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to understand this, the Prophet says, understand as if someone is in your shadow. You're sitting and, and someone is in your shadow, so, so close. So the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be so close to a believer on the day of judgment. And then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to this believer. فَيُقَرِّرُهُ بِذُنُوبِهِ فَيَقُولُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this believer confess of all his sin that he has committed. He or she, all the sin that he or she has committed, Allah will make this believer confess of those sin. فَيَقُولُ And Allah will say, the Prophet says, Allah will say, أَتَعْرِفُ ذَنْبَ كَذَا Do you remember committing such and such a sin? أَتَعْرِفُ ذَنْبَ كَذَا And do you remember such and such a time you committed such and such a sin? فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَعْرِفُ And the believer will say, Yes, indeed, O oh my Lord, I remember and I acknowledge, I confess and I agree that I have committed and faltered and done this wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this closeness of His mercy will say to the believer, فَإِنِّي قَدْ سَتَرْتُهَا عَلَيْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا I concealed this sin in the world for you. And today it is between me and you. I forgive you of those sin. I forgive you of those sin. And it's mentioned, After those sin are forgiven from his account, he will be given his book of deeds in his right hand. His book of deeds will be given to him in his right hand. Muttafaqun alayhi. This is a narration found both in Bukhari and also Sahih Muslim. So again, we understand from the mercy and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of these scholars, they write in the explanation of this hadith that there is a general principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he has established through the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu that this is a person who believes, a person who moves forward in terms of sharia and deen and practice they will be heading towards paradise. However, if there are cases where a person may have made the wrong choices, there is still an option where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His benevolence, He may forgive someone. He may enshower His mercy, He may enshroud someone, He may envelope someone in His unlimited bounty and mercy. And this is one of those examples that Allah will invite this believer so close to His mercy and He will be secretly told. In other verses we hear of the Qur'an and also narrations where a person will be brought forth in front of all the creation. Amam al-Khala'iq. In front of all the creation and their book of deeds will be either given in the right or the left hand. So the scholars say that for some whom Allah wants to show His special mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may favor a person with His forgiveness, with His bounty. And another point that the muhaddithun also write, is that in the light of this narration and also other narrations that when we commit sin ourselves, we shouldn't be proud of our sin and make it public. Okay? We shouldn't do things that are inappropriate, that are wrong, and then feel proud of it. As one narration points out that a person commits a sin and no one knows except this person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the next day in the morning, the person calls his friends and says, you know what I did last night? X, Y, and Z. And then he makes it open and Allah subhanahu the Prophet says, Allah had concealed that sin from humanity, from others, and this person is making it fahsha, is making it open. So that's why one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Sattar. He conceals, he hides. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he will forgive certain people. Uh, specially he will show his favor. And uh, these are people that the, the muhaddithun write that they are sincere in making their tawbah. So they may falter here and there. However, they are sincere in their tawbah. They make the right choice and they never 
uh, go back to the sin or the flaws that they were involved in. So again, this narration points out of the great mercy and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next two narrations are very similar, so I'll translate them and then we'll ex- do a little, of a, a little explanation. And inshallah, we will conclude the session. So this, the first narration is on the strength of Ibn Mas'ud. And the next one after this is on the strength of Anas radiallahu anhu. Both of these companions are known as the eminent uh, companions who were very close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, A man came in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Asaba min imra'atin qubla. And this person felt so shameful of a sin that he committed. And he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said that I advanced to a woman and... I ended up kissing her. فَأَتَنَّ نَبِيَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم And the companion says, Ibn Mas'ud says, this man came to the Prophet ﷺ and informed him and he was very fearful of something that he had committed his sin. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And Ibn Mas'ud says, Allah revealed the verse of the Qur'an because of this person's sincerity in acknowledging the sin and asking forgiveness for the sin. So what, did he, what was the verse that was revealed? أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارَ Perform or establish the prayer at both corners of the day. Tarafayin nahar at both both corners of the day. Wazulafam min al layl and also during the dark periods of the night, during the portions of the night. Inna al hasanati yudhibna al sayyat for certainly good deeds abolish eliminate evil deeds. So when this verse came down. It's mentioned in numerous uh, explanations of this hadith that this person was so worried about his sin, he had recently accepted Islam, he didn't understand the implications of the uh, gender interaction, the gender relations, etc. And he ended up committing this sin, he realized that I've committed this sin, and I advanced to the woman and I did inappropriate actions. So this verse was revealed based on his sincerity of acknowledging his sin and asking forgiveness. So when the Prophet ﷺ told him, I just received this verse upon your question, he was elated and he said, Ali Hada Ya Rasulullah, is th- was this verse revealed exclusively for me? Is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me because I, uh, I would do some good deeds and Allah will abolish and eliminate my evil deeds? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Li Jami'i Ummati Kulluhum, that this is not only exclusively for you. It's for every believer that belongs to my ummah. Every person that belongs to the nation and the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, they are entitled to the implications of this verse. So what are the implications of this verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is simply saying that perform the five prayers. Tarafayin nahari wa zulafam min al-layl. If we look at all the books of tafsir, it refers to the five mandatory prayers. Two corners of the day and portions of the darkness. Now different scholars, various mufassirun have explained how, uh, what would be the salah that would come at the first corner of the day, what would be the salahs that come at the end portion of the day, the other corner, and in the darkness of the night. Some say the darkness of the night refers to uh, Maghrib and Isha, and the two corners refer to the other four prayer, the other three prayers. Uh, and other mufassirun have, have explained it otherwise. But here this is not the objective. The objective is that we perform the five prayers, meaning we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Then in between, if we end up faltering, specifically minor sin, specifically minor sin, minor sin the implication is, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَةِ The good deeds will eliminate, will rub out, will delete the, the evil deeds from our accounts. And another point that the commentators also point out here is that there are many specific verses that came down for a specific incident in result of a specific incident. But the implications of that verse in most cases become general for all the believers. So for example, we see here that this was in result of a specific case. He was acknowledging his sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse saying that this is the principle, you do good deeds, it will eliminate your bad deeds. As long as one is sincere. So this, the Prophet ﷺ said, it's not exclusively for you, it's for every person who belongs in the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. So again, it's from the mercy and the bounty and the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and as I said, the next narration is very similar, so we'll translate it here. Anas radiallahu anhu says, that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ. Now the commentators say this man's name 
was Kaab ibn Amr and he had a kunniya, Abu al-Yusr. So this man, Abu al-Yusr, came to the presence of the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Asabtu haddan faaqimhu alayya. He told the Prophet ﷺ, I've committed a drastic sin and I want you to execute a punishment upon me. I've done this sin and I want you as the leader of the Muslims to execute a punishment upon me. وَحَضَرَتِ salah. The companion here, Anas radiallahu anhu says, as this person was discussing the matter, the, the salah time was near and the Prophet ﷺ was making preparations to perform the salah. The adhan had been said, the iqamah had been said, etc. So in the narration, Anas radiallahu anhu says here, فَصَلَّى مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. He, he prayed with the Prophet ﷺ. He offered the prayer. And then he came back to the Prophet ﷺ. فَلَمَّا قَضَى الصَّلَاةِ When he completed the prayer, he came back to the Prophet ﷺ and he said the same words. He said, إِنِّي أَصَبْتُ حَدًّا فَأَقِمْ فِيَّ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ He said, I have committed a drastic sin, O Prophet of Allah, and I request you, I appeal to you, that you establish upon me whatever is the injunction of the kitab. Meaning whatever the Qur'an, whatever the teaching is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allow that punishment to be put upon me because I confess of my sin. The Prophet ﷺ then asked him, هَلْ حَضَرْتَ مَعَنَا الصَّلَاةِ Did you offer the salah with us? Did you offer the prayer with us? He said, نعم. He said, yes indeed, I did. So the Prophet ﷺ said, قَدْ غُفِرَ لَكْ Allah has forgiven you of your sin. Allah has forgiven you of your sin. So the commentators say, this is the same incident that was mentioned in the previous narration. And if we put these narrations together, we understand again the implication that the fara'id, the fard prayers, they eliminate this, the minor sins that, that occur in between. And some scholars say that the Prophet ﷺ noticed his sincerity and noticed his, his confession and his, his understanding of the matter. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ referred to this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this verse also was revealed at this specific time. There's one small narration that remains, so we'll do that also. Anas radiallahu anhu says, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah la yarda anil abdi an yakul al akla. Allah is extremely pleased at the servant when the servant eats a morsel and after eating the morsel praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fayahmuduhu alay. So we put something in our mouth and we say, Alhamdulillah. All praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has facilitated this. Aw yashrab al sharba. Or a person drinks a sip of water, a sip of something that is permissible to drink, فَيَحْمَدُهُ عَلَيْهَا And this person again says, Alhamdulillah. Thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really extremely pleased at that. And in another narration we find that uh, the Prophet ﷺ referred to this and said something of a similar nature that at any time, a person, a believer, put something in his mouth, whether it be a morsel or a sip of a drink, this person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is extremely pleased. Why? Because anything that happens to a believer, the believer understand there is the power and the might and the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is only our duty that we acknowledge His mercy, we acknowledge His power, even if it's something adverse, even if it's something that's difficult. A person needs to get to a meeting, but then their car breaks down. Or something happens, emergency, and they're unable, and they're upset. But think to yourself from another way. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want me to reach there because there, there could have been some harm in the way. Maybe there could be some issue there. I don't know. Allah knows. And Allah wanted me to stay away from that. So Allah protected me from that and kept me back. So, you know, we can look at things from different perspectives. But the believer is such that whether it's something that is good or whether it's something that is negative that occurs in our lives, we turn it back to the power and the might or the mercy and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with His special mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelope us with His bounty and His rahmah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success in this world and the everlasting life of the